Hello, friends. In our annual journey through the Torah, we find ourselves in the book of Genesis. This book contains the central creation myths of our people, including the story of the flood, as well as the stories of the first families of Judaism. You know, we often take it for granted that we have access to these sacred stories. Not every people is so fortunate, so blessed to have this access to its people's ancient sacred stories. You know, when I was working as a filmmaker, I was making a film on the Grand Canyon. As part of the human history of the canyon, we planned to visit the Havasupai tribe that lives in a deep side canyon off the South Rim. I wanted to interview one of the tribal elders and, made, and I made endless calls to the tribal office in Havasupai. I must have left, I don't know, six messages and could not get anyone to return my calls. Finally, when I just had just about given up hope, I got a call back. The tribal elder identified himself and explained that other filmmakers had previously contacted the tribe and a few times promises were made and not kept regard regarding how the tribe was portrayed. They were understandably wary of any further participation I explained that I was making a documentary film on the Grand Canyon that was going to be aired on the Dis Disney and Discovery channels. And it was impossible to think about making a film about the Grand Canyon and not including the Havasupai tribe who had been the guardians of the canyon for at least a thousand years. I told the elder that I understood his reticence, but we were going to include the a story about the tribe and I would certainly rather that he tell it rather than myself. And I said I'd like to interview him for the film and invite him to speak about anything that he thought was important to his people. It was this very long silence on the other end of the line. I had a distinct feeling that this silence was some form of test and I I did everything in my power to wait for him to respond. It must have been more than three minutes. Just as I was about to hang up in despair, I heard him clear his throat and speak. He said, all right, I will meet with you and you can film me sharing something about my people. I was delighted. I checked my shoot schedule and we made a date for the interview. You see, there are only three ways to get down to Havasupai. You can walk down, ride mules down, or fly in by helicopter. The only one we had time for was the helicopter and we made plans to meet the tribal elder at noon at the post office on the reservation. On the day of the shoot, we flew down at 7 a.m. and filmed some of the natural beauty of the Havasupai Canyon. We were fortunate in that there was an Indian holidays celebration and we filmed uh, some children racing horses and other lovely games and crafts. I stationed one crew member at the post office in case the tribal elder arrived early. By 1 p.m. he hadn't arrived yet and I kept shooting whatever I could while we waited. A little before 2 p.m. I went over to the post office to see if, I don't know, he might have left a note. I looked around as I entered and I noticed that there was no clock in the post office. In fact, I hadn't seen a clock or anyone wearing a watch since the moment we arrived. It dawned on me that these people operated with a completely different sense of time. I went outside and I looked up at the sun, which appeared to be about overhead in what might be a midday position. And just then I saw an older man walking toward us. It was him. 
I introduced myself and my crew and we began talking. I had done my homework and I said to him, I know that most of your tribe's sacred stories are not shared with non-tribe members, but might there be any sacred story that could be shared with outsiders? He looked at me with what seemed like curiosity and remarked that like many tribes, their sacred stories were part of their tribe's oral tradition and they were forbidden to write them down. Sadly, as a result, many of their sacred stories had been lost forever. I was trying to think of something to do when he said, there is a creation story that is permitted to be shared with non-tribal members. Huh. I expressed my appreciation and asked him if he could tell the story in their native tongue so that we could begin hearing the story spoken authentically. And then we would do a voiceover with an English translation. He understood. He began telling the story in what was a very flat, dull, monotonal voice. Now, I stopped to shoot and politely asked him if this is how they shared this sacred story among tribal members. He replied, of course not. We never tell this story. We always chant it. I nodded and asked if he was permitted to chant it for us. He thought for a moment and said, yes. I began rolling film and he started to chant. But once again, it was clear to me that he was not fully into the chanting. And once again, I, I stopped the filming to ask him a question. Is this how you chant when the story is told among your people? He replied, of course not. We never chant the story without beating a drum. I politely asked him if he could drum as the story was told, and he called over a, a boy who was standing nearby and asked him to bring, to bring him his drum. The boy returned moments later with a beautiful, large hand drum with skin. I couldn't tell what animal it was, but stretched skin uh, across the drum. We rolled film and the elder began drumming and chanting, and it was amazing. When he finished, he translated the mythic story of creation for us. We thanked him and I told him that I was going to make a donation to the tribal fund and we set off. On that day, I gained a refined appreciation that we Jews also never tell our sacred stories in public. We always chant them, sing them out in the language in which they were originally written down. And what a blessing it is that they were written down and that we have them to this very day to savor, learn from, and pass on la dor vador from generation to generation. Stay safe and be well. Shalom uvracha, peace and blessings.